While WordPress is still king, many would-be bloggers are turning to static alternatives as a way to cut down on hosting costs and simplify their setups. I'm Alex Arena with Tuts Plus, and in this tutorial, I'll show you how to get the best of both worlds by using WordPress to generate a static site. That's right, it's actually possible to use WordPress to make a static site, and it's not as hard as you might think. But wait, before I begin, let me give the uninitiated a brief overview of the differences between a static and dynamic website. Here's the gist of things. A dynamic website uses technology such as PHP, in the case of WordPress, to build a website right when a user visits the page. A static website, on the other hand, is much simpler and is just a collection of web pages that have already been compiled. Think of it this way. When you visit a dynamic website's homepage, you're actually sending a request to the server to piece together a bunch of different information. When you visit the homepage of a static site, you're viewing the actual homepage file. While dynamic sites are capable of doing amazing things, this power comes at a cost. All that server power isn't cheap, and serving a dynamic site can be orders of magnitude more expensive than a static one. And when your dynamic blog starts to grow, those server expenses will grow with it. So, back to where we started. If you were thinking, boy, I wish there was a way to use WordPress to create my blog and then generate a static site from what WordPress had just created, you're in luck. Because that's just what we're going to do. Now, of course, we're going to need some help. That help is going to be in the form of an application called MAMP. It's actually just an easy to use wrapper around some popular web server tools that are required to run WordPress. These tools include Mac OS X, the operating system, Apache, the web server, MySQL, the database management system, and PHP, the programming language used for web development. Get it? MAMP. So now you know what MAMP means and why you need it. Let's get started by downloading it from MAMP.info. As you can see, the fine folks who run MAMP have included the pro version of the MAMP software alongside the download of its free counterpart. Lucky for us, although both MAMP and MAMP Pro are going to be installed, we're only going to need the standard and free MAMP. So that being said, I'll press download. And actually, while that's downloading, let's hop over to WordPress.org and grab the latest version of WordPress. For me, that's version 3.9.1. I'll click to download that, and we're set. In the interest of time, I actually took care of installing MAMP right before recording this screencast. The process is the same as just about any other application, so I trust you don't need me to show you how. Once you've downloaded WordPress and installed a MAMP, we can dive into creating our static blog. First things first, we'll launch MAMP. Even though I just launched MAMP, it's asking if what I really wanted to do is launch MAMP Pro. No, I said I just wanted to launch MAMP. If I really wanted to launch MAMP Pro, I would have just done that, thank you very much. To make sure they don't try and upsell me again, I'll uncheck the box labeled, Check for MAMP Pro when starting MAMP. Once that's taken care of, I'll launch MAMP and we'll be on our way. Before we get our servers up and running, let's first go into the preferences and get the backbone of our operation running smoothly. First, I'll head over to the PHP tab to make sure version 5.5 is selected. This is because recent versions of WordPress require it. Next, under the Apache tab, we'll be asked to set the document root. While by default this is the htdocs folder within MAMP, I'll change it to something a bit more friendly by clicking here. How about home slash sites? That works nicely. Once selected, press OK and we'll be back in the main MAMP interface. Let's get things rolling by starting the servers. Once your servers are running properly, you'll see the green lights next to the Apache server and my SQL server turn green. In addition, you'll now see that the option to open the start page is now enabled. Let's do just that. Once at the start page, we'll scroll down to MySQL and click the link to PHP My Admin. As I mentioned earlier, MySQL is the database management software utilized by WordPress, and now you'll see that we're able to take care of administering those databases with the handy PHP My Admin program. While handy, PHP My Admin can still be pretty intimidating. 
Luckily, we're going to get in, create a database, and get out. To do that, I'll click on Databases and give my database a name. I'll choose WordPress, since that's a pretty safe bet. There's no need for us to choose an option for collation, as it automatically will be assigned by MySQL when the database tables are created during the WordPress install. Next, I'll just click Create, and as you can see, our database has been created. Now, let's get out of phpMyAdmin before we screw something up. And believe me, if you spend enough time in phpMyAdmin, you will screw something up. Now that the dirty work of creating our database is taken care of, we can finally begin with the actual WordPress install. I'll head over to my Downloads folder, and then I'll real quick unzip the WordPress archive. What we're left with is a folder named WordPress, which we'll need to move to our documents root. Since I changed mine to home slash sites, I'll move it there. Now that WordPress is in our document root, I'll change the name of its folder so I'll quickly be able to tell which project it is once I've created a few more. I'll call it blog. Next, I'll head back to Safari and enter the URL localhost colon 8888. Then I'll just click on the newly created blog folder. This is the URL where our WordPress install will be located, so it's not a bad idea to bookmark it. Once bookmarked, you might notice that it's asking us to create a wp-config.php file. I'll click to create it, and then I'll click the button very cleverly titled, Let's Go. Now we're being prompted for some information about our database. Since way back when in MySQL we named our database WordPress, I'll leave that the same. Both our username and password will be root. The next two items will leave unchanged and hit Submit. If all went well, and it did, all we have to do now is hit Run the Install. As you can see, we've made it to the famous 5-minute WordPress installation. We're going to do it in a little under a minute. First, I'll give my blog a name. I'll call it Tuts Plus Demo. Next, I need a username. I'll choose admin. I'll enter a unique password, give it an email address, and press install. Just like that, we've installed WordPress using MAMP as our web server. Now that's all well and good, but you might be saying to yourself, self, this isn't a static website, and you'd be right. What we're going to do is let our Mac handle the heavy lifting of running the server software through MAMP and then, with the help of a WordPress plugin, export a static version of the site whenever we make changes. So, enough talk, let's do it. First, I'll log into WordPress with the username and password I just created. Next, I'll head straight over to Plugins in the sidebar and choose Add New. Doing a quick search for static will net us a bunch of results but we're only concerned with the top one, really static. True to its name, this will generate static HTML files whenever we make a change to our blog. I'll click to install now, press OK, and then when it's finished, I'll activate the plugin. Now you can see that really static has been activated, but we're not out of the woods just yet. To finish the setup, we'll have to go to the Quick Setup by clicking here. We can either choose to run the plugin in Test Mode or Live Mode. I'll choose Live Mode, but if you want to mess around with different settings and or themes, it's best to do so in the Test Mode. Next, we'll need to set our storage location. If your web host supports FTP or SFTP, you can enter your credentials for those here. I'll just set my static website to get published to a folder on my computer which I can later push to a web server if I choose. To do this, I'll keep Work with Local File System checked and keep a note of where the files are being saved. By default, it's to a folder named Static within the Really Static plugin. I won't change that. The final setting to set our storage location will be to say where visitors can view our website. Since I left the path on the Local File System unchanged, 
I won't change this either. With the storage location information out of the way, I'll press Next. Here you can see that Really Static is verifying to make sure it can read, write, and delete files. If you follow the previous steps carefully, these three boxes should all be green. When confirmed, I'll press Next once more and hit Start Generating Files. Now that it's finished generating, we can view our final static site. As you can see, everything is in place and it looks great. If we head back to our dynamic WordPress install, you can see that everything looks virtually identical, save for the admin bar at the top. That's because the admin bar is actually a dynamic element that's incompatible with the static site. While losing the admin bar isn't really anything to lose sleep over, losing other dynamic features such as comments or search might give you reason to pause. Luckily, those can be replaced with externally hosted solutions like Discuss and a site search like the one offered by DuckDuckGo. Once you've considered the trade-offs, let's move on to our last step of creating a new post and testing Really Static's automatic static site generation. I'll head back to the dashboard, click Posts, and then Add New. I'll give it a title, some text, a category, and tags, just like any other post. Finally, I'll hit publish and let Really Static work its magic. Just like that, our post has been published. And get this, WordPress has automatically set its permalink to the Really Static version of the post. Nice! When I view the post, you can see that Really Static has worked its magic, and we're in business. I'm Alex Serena with Tuts Plus, and this has been an introduction to creating a static site with MAMP and WordPress. So go crazy, and let me know what you've created in the comments below.